Thank you. I got it. I want to go back just a few verses to Saul's um, little request to David at the end of chapter 25. Now I know that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Swear to me, therefore, by the Lord, that you will not cut off my descendants after me, and that you will not wipe out my name from my father's house. So David swore this to Saul. Then Saul went home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. Now, Samuel died, and all Israel assembled and mourned for him. They buried him at his home in Ramah. Then David got up and went down to the wilderness of Paran. There was a man in Ma'on whose property was in Carmel. The man was very rich. He had 3,000 sheep and a thousand goats. He was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the man of the name was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. The woman was clever and beautiful, but the man was surly and mean. He was a Calebite. David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep. So David sent 10 young men. And David said to the young men, go up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. Thus you shall salute him. Peace be to you and peace to your house and peace be to all that you have. I hear that you have shearers. Now, your shepherds have been with us, and we did them no harm, and they missed nothing all the time they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will tell you. Therefore, let my young men find favor in your sight, for we have come on a feast day. Please give whatever you have at hand to your servants and to your son, David. When David's young men came, they said all this to Nabal in the name of David, and then they waited. But Nabal answered David's servants, who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants today who are breaking away from their masters. Shall I take my bread and my water and the meat that I have butchered for my shearers and give it to men who came from I do not know where? <laughs> so David's young men turned away and came back and told him all this. David said to his men, every man strap on his sword. And every one of them strapped on his sword. David also strapped on his sword, and about 400 men went up after David, while 200 remained with the baggage. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he shouted insults at them. Yet the men were very good to us, and we suffered no harm, and we never missed anything when we were in the field, as long as we were with them. They were a wall to us, both by night and by day, all the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, know this and consider what you should do, for evil has been decided against our master and against all his house. 
he is so ill nature that no one can speak to him. Then Abigail hurried and took 200 loaves, two skins of wine, five sheep ready dressed, five measures of parched grain, 100 clusters of raisins, and 200 cakes of figs. She loaded them on donkeys and said to her young men, go on ahead of me, I am coming after you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. As she rode on the donkey and came down under cover of the mountain, David and his men came down toward her and she met them. Now David had said, surely it was in vain that I protected all that this fellow has in the wilderness so that nothing was missed of all that belonged to him, but he has returned me evil for good. God do so to David and more also, if by morning I leave so much as one male of all who belong to him. When Abigail saw David, she hurried and alighted from the donkey and fell before David on her face, bowing to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, Upon me alone, my lord, be the guilt. Please let your servant speak in your ears and hear the words of your servant. My lord, do not take seriously this ill-natured fellow Nabal, for as his, his name, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your servant, did not see the young men of my Lord whom you sent. Now then, my Lord, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, since the Lord has restrained you from blood guilt and from taking vengeance with your own hand, now let your enemies and those who seek evil to do who seek to do evil to my Lord be like Nabal. And now let this present that your servant has brought to my Lord be given to the young men who follow my Lord. Please forgive the trespass of your servant. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house because my Lord is fighting the battles of the Lord and evil shall not be found in you so long as you live. If anyone should rise up to pursue you and to seek your life, the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living under the care of the Lord your God. But the lives of your enemies he shall sling out as from the hollow of a sling. When the Lord has done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and has appointed you prince over Israel, my Lord shall have no cause of grief or pangs of conscience, for having shed blood without cause, or for having saved himself. And when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your servant. David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you to meet me today. Blessed be your good sense, and blessed be you, who have kept me today from blood guilt and from avenging myself by my own hand. For as surely as the Lord of God, the God of Israel lives, who has restrained me from hurting you, unless you had hurried and come to meet me, truly by morning there would not have been left to Nabal so much as one male. And David received from her hand what she had brought him. He said to her, go up to your house in peace. See, I have heeded your voice and I have granted your petition. Abigail 
came to Nabal. He was holding a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunk. So she told him nothing at all until the morning light. In the morning, when the wine had gone out of Nabal, his wife told him these things, and his heart died within him. He became like a stone. About 10 days later, the Lord struck Nabal and he died. When Nabal heard, when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, blessed be the Lord who has judged the case of Nabal's insult to me and has kept back his servant from evil. The Lord has returned the evil doing of Nabal upon his own head. Then David sent and wooed Abigail to make her his wife. When David's servants came to Abigail at Carmel, they said to her, David has sent us to you to take you to him as a wife. She rose and bowed down with her face to the ground and said, your servant is a slave to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. Abigail got up hurriedly and rode away on a donkey. Her five maids attended her. She went after the messengers of David and became his wife. David also married Ahinoam of Jezreel. Both of them became his wives. Saul had given his daughter Michal, David's wife, to Palti, son of Laish, who was from Galim. Laurie, would you like to go ahead? Great. You're muted. I know. <laughs> I have a dog here that's right on the page. Reminds me of Timothy. Yeah. Okay. David spares Saul's life a second time. Then the Ziphites came to Saul at Gibeah, saying, David is in hiding on the hill of Hashalah, which is opposite Jeshimon. So Saul rose and went down to the wilderness, wilderness of Ziph with 3,000 chosen men of Israel to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. Saul encamped on the hill of Hashilah, which is opposite Jeshimon, beside the road. But David remained in the wilderness. And when he learned that Saul had come after him into the wilderness, David sent out spies and learned that Saul had indeed arrived. When Saul set out and came to the place where Saul had encamped, and David saw the place where Saul lay with Abner, son of Ner, the commander of his army. Saul was lying within the encampment while the army was encamped around him. Then Saul said to Ash, Ahim, sorry, I've got, shh, go ahead. Then David said to Amilech, the Hittite, and to Joab's brother, Abishai, son of Jeruha, who will go down with me into the camp to Saul? Abishai said, I will go down with you. So David and Abishai went to the army by night, and there Saul lay sleeping within the encampment with his spear stuck in the ground at his head, and Abner and the army lay around him. Abishai said to David, God has given your enemy into your hand today. Now therefore let me pin him to the ground with one stroke of the spear. I will not strike him twice. But David said to Abishai, do not destroy him, for who can raise his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless. David said, 
as the Lord lives, the Lord will strike him down, or his day will die, his day will come to die, or he will go down into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should raise my hand against the Lord's anointed. But now take the spear that is at his head and the water jar and let us go. So David took the spear that was at Saul's head and the water jar and they went away. No one saw it or knew it, nor did anyone awake, for they were all asleep because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side and stood on top of a hill far away with a great distance between them. David called to the army and to Abner, son of Mer, saying, Abner, will you not answer? Then Abner replied, Who are you that calls to the king? David said to Abner, Are you not a man? Who is like you in Israel? Why then have you not kept watch over your lord, the king? For one of the people came in to destroy your lord, the king. This thing that you have done is not good. As the Lord lives, you deserve to die, because you have not kept watch over your Lord, the Lord's anointed. See now where the king's spear or the water jar that was at his head. Saul recognized David's voice and said, Is this your voice, my son David? David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. And he added, Why does my lord pursue his servant? For what have I done? What guilt is on my hand? Now, therefore, let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If it is the Lord who has stirred you up against me, may he accept an offering. But if it is mortals, may they be cursed before the Lord, for they have driven me out today from my share in the heritage of the Lord, saying, Go serve other gods. Now, therefore, do not let my blood fall to the ground, away from the presence of the Lord, for the king of Israel has come out to seek a single flea, like one who hunts a partridge in the mountains. Then Saul said, I have done wrong. Come back, my son David, for I will never harm you again, because my life was precious in your sight today. I have been a fool and have made a great mistake. David replied, Here is your spear, O king. Let one of the young men come over and get it. The Lord rewards everyone for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord gave you into my hand today, but I would not raise my hand against the Lord's anointed. As your life was precious today in my sight, so may my life be precious in the sight of the Lord, and may he rescue me from all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be you, my son David. You will do many things and will succeed in them. So David went his way, and Saul returned to his place. Well, let's pass the baton. Sandy, uh, you're a, a nice reader. Yeah, go ahead. David serves King Achish of Gath. David said in his heart, I shall certainly perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than to escape to the land of the Philistines. Then Saul will despair of seeking me any longer within the borders of Israel and I shall escape out of his hand. So David set out and went over, he and the 600 men who were with him, to King Ashish, son of Maok of Gath. David stayed with Ashish at Gath, he and his troops, every man with his household, and David with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail of Carmel, Nabal's widow. When Saul was told that David had fled to Gath, 
he no longer sought for him. Then David said to Ashish, if I have found favor in your sight, let a place be given me in one of the country towns so that I may live, may live there. For why should your servant live in the royal city with you? So that day, Achish gave him Ziklag. Therefore, Ziklag has belonged to the kings of Judah to this day. The length of time that David lived in the country of the Philistines was one year and four months. Now David and his men went up and made raids on the Geshurites, the Gerizites, and the Amalekites. For these were the landed settlements from Telem on the way to Shur and on, the land, on to the land of Egypt. David struck the land, leaving neither man nor woman alive, but took away the sheep, the oxen, the donkeys, the camels, and the clothing, and came back to Achish. When Achish asked, against whom have you made a raid today? David would say, against the Negev of Judah, or against the Negev of the Jeramalites, or against the Negev of the Kenites. David left neither man nor woman alive to be brought back to Gath, thinking they might tell about us and say, David has done so and so. Such was his practice at the time he lived in the country of the Philistines. Achish trusted David, thinking he has made himself utterly abhorrent to his people Israel. Therefore, he shall always be my servant. You want to go on to the next chapter, Sandy? Okay. In those days, the Philistines gathered their forces for war to fight against Israel. Achish said to David, you know, of course, that you and your men are to go out with me in the army. David said to Achish, very well, then you shall know what your servant can do. Achish said to David, very well, I will make you my bodyguard for life. Now Samuel had died. And all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah, his own city. Saul had expelled the mediums and the wizards from the land. The Philistines assembled and came and encamped at Shunurn. Saul gathered all Israel and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. When Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, not by dreams or by Urim or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, seek out for me a woman who is a medium so that I may go to her and inquire of her. His servants said to him, there is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes and went there, he and two men with him. They came to the woman by night, and he said, Consult a spirit for me, and bring up for me the one whom I name to you. The woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the wizards from the land. Why then are you laying a snare for my life to bring about my death? But Saul swore to her by the Lord, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall call shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, whom shall I bring up for you? He answered, bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman said to Saul, why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, have no fear. What do you see? The woman said to Saul, I see a divine being coming up out of the ground. He said to her, what is his appearance? She said, an old man is coming up. He is wrapped in a robe. So Saul knew that it was Samuel and he bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. Then Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul answered, I am in great distress. 
for the Philistines are warring against me, and God has turned away from me and answers me no more, either by prophets or by dreams. So I have summoned you to tell me what I should do. Samuel said, Why then do you ask me, since the Lord has turned from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done to you just as he spoke by me, for the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, David. Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord and did not carry out his fierce wrath against Amalek, therefore the Lord has done this thing to you today. Moreover, the Lord will give Israel along with you into the hands of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons shall be with me. The Lord will also give the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. Immediately, Saul fell full length on the ground, filled with fear because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten nothing all day and all night. The woman came to Saul, and when she saw that he was terrified, she said to him, Your servant has listened to you. I have taken my life in my hand and have listened to what you have said to me. Now, therefore, you also listen to your servant. Let me set a morsel of bread before you. Eat, that you may have strength when you go on your way. He refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, urged him, and he listened to their words. Now he got up from the ground and sat on the bed. Now the woman had a fatted calf in the house. She quickly slaughtered it, and she took flour, kneaded it, and baked unleavened cakes. She put them before Saul and his servants, and they ate. Then they rose and went away that night. Is there someone else who would like to go forward? Barbara, how about you? Would you? You're, you're muted, Barbara. No? Anyone else? Now the Philistines gathered all their forces at Aphek, while the Israelites were encamped by the fountain that is in Jezreel. As the lords of the Philistines were passing on by hundreds and by thousands, and David and his men were passing on in the rear with Ashish, the commanders of the Philistines said, what are these Hebrews doing here? Ashish said to the commanders of the Philistines, is this not David, the servant of King Saul of Israel, who has been with me now for days and years? Since he deserted to me, I have found no fault in him to this day. But the commanders of the Philistines were angry with him. And the commanders of the Philistines said to him, send the man back so that he may return to the place that you have assigned to him. He shall not go down with us to battle or else he may become an adversary to us in the battle. For how could this fellow reconcile himself to his Lord? Would it not be with the heads of the men here? Is this not David of whom they sing to one another in dances? Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. Then Ashish called David and said to him, As the Lord lives, you have been honest, and to me it seems right that you should march out and in with me in the campaign. For I have found nothing wrong in you from the day of your coming to me until today. Nevertheless, the lords do not approve of you. So go back now and go peaceably. Do nothing to displease the, Lord of the lords of the Philistines. David said to Ashish, but what have I done? What have you found in your servant from the day I entered your service until now, that I should not go and fight against the enemies of my lord, the king? Ashish replied to David, I know that you are as blameless in my sight as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the commanders of the Philistines have said, he shall not go up with us to the battle. Now then, rise early in the morning, you and the servants of your Lord who came with you, and go to the place that I appointed for you. 
As for the evil report, do not take it to heart, for you have done well before me. Start early in the morning and leave as soon as you have light. So David set out with his men early in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines. But the Philistines went up to Jezreel. Why don't you keep going, Barbara? Now, when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid on the Negev and on Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag, burned it down, and taken captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. They killed none of them, but carried them off and went their way. When David and his men came to the city, they found it burned down and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. David's two wives had also been taken captive, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was in great danger, for the people spoke of stoning him, because all the people were bitter in spirit for their sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. David said to the priest Abiathar, son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. Ephod? What is that word? Ephod. We talked about it last time. So Abiathar brought the ephod to David. David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? He answered him, pursue for you shall surely overtake and you shall surely rescue. So David set out, he and the 600 men who were with him. They came to the Wadi Besor where those stayed who were left behind. But David went on with the pursuit he and 400 men, 200 stayed behind, too exhausted to cross the Wadi Besor. In the open country, they found an Egyptian and brought him to David. They gave him bread and he ate. They gave him water to drink. They also gave him a piece of fig cake and two clusters of raisins. When he had eaten, his spirit revived, for he had not eaten bread or drunk water for three days and three nights. Then David said to him, to whom do you belong? Where are you from? He said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite. My master left me behind because I fell sick three days ago. We made a raid on the Negev of the Cherethites and on that which belongs to Judah and on the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag down. David said to him, will you take me to this raiding party? He said, swear to me by God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master, and I will take you down to them. When he had taken him down, they were spread out all over the ground, eating and drinking and dancing because of the great amount of spoil they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Not one of them escaped, except 400 young men who mounted camels and fled. David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken, and David rescued his two wives. Nothing was missing, whether small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything that had been taken. David brought back everything. David also captured all the flocks and herb and herds which were driven ahead of the other cattle. People said, this is David's spoil. Then David came to the 200 men who had been too exhausted to follow David and who had been left at the Wadi Besor. They went out to meet David and to meet the people who were with him. When David drew near to the people, he saluted them. Then all the corrupt and worthless fellows among the men who had gone with David said, because they did not go with us, we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered, except that each man may take his wife and children and leave. But David said, you shall not do so, my brothers, with what the Lord has given us. He has preserved us 
and handed over to us the raiding party that attacked us. Who would listen to you in this matter? For the share of the one who goes down into the battle shall be the same as the share of the one who stays by the baggage. They shall share alike. From that day forward, he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel. It continues to the present day. When David came to Ziklag, he sent part of the spoil to his friends, the elders of Judah, saying, Here is a present for you from the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. It was for those in Bethel, in Ramoth of the Negeb, in Jatir, in Aror, in Sifmoth, in Eshtemo, in Rakal, in the towns of the Jeh Jeramalites, in the towns of the Kenites, in Horma, in Bor Ashan, in Atak, in Hebron, all the places where David and his men had roamed. Now, the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled before the Philistines, and many fell on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines overtook Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan, and Abinadab, and Malkishua, the sons of Saul. The battle pressed hard upon Saul. The archers found him, and he was badly wounded by them. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your sword and thrust me through with it, so that these uncircumcised may not come and thrust me through and make sport of me. But his armor bearer was unwilling, for he was terrified. So Saul took his own sword and fell upon it. When his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell upon his sword and died with him. So Saul and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men died together on the same day. When the men of Israel, who were on the other side of the valley, and those beyond the Jordan, saw that the men of Israel had fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook their towns and fled. And the Philistines came and occupied them. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. They cut off his head, stripped off his armor, and sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistines to carry the good news to the houses of their idols and to the people. They put his armor in the temple of Astarte, and they fastened his body to the walls of Beth Shan. But when the inhabitants of Jabeth Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men set out, traveled all night long, and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Beth Shan. They came to Jabesh and burned them there. Then they took the bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree in Jabesh and fasted seven days. Wow. Wow. That what is the family. end. That is the end of First Samuel. Yeah. Pretty amazing. What an ending. Yeah. But it is a kind of cross-cultural thing, isn't it? How much people care about the body, the dead yeah. body. 
Yeah. Yeah. But they went and took took his body down. Yeah. Well, it was so awful and shameful what they yeah. did, no matter what mistakes Saul had made. Yeah. I find them hard to pick out sometimes, <laughs> you know, actually. <laughs> yeah. That phrase of the Witch of Endor is certainly one we uh -huh. hear. What's that one, Barbara? No, I said the the medium at Endor. Isn't she sometimes called the witch at Endor? She's called the witch yeah. of Endor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like that better, actually. <laughs> I, I, I like these the phrases, like things like David did so and so. <laughs> it sounds like what? <laughs> yeah. Every now and then it's uh, it just has a I don't know, a funny tone to it. Maybe because it sounds familiar, you know. So yeah. yeah. I think this reading this um, really reminds me of what a um, complex person um, Saul was, and um, mm -hmm. and you know he, he's not painted with one palette. You know he he's not bad all the time or good all the time or he's not loving all the time. I mean, it, there's so much movement that's going on um, in who's fighting for whom and what he's setting as his priority and all that, and and somehow when they were talking about, I guess that was that Saul that was nailed to the wall of the. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, I, you know, just right after Easter, he just said, um, I couldn't help thinking about taking down the body from the cross. Yeah. And um, what a what an important thing that, you know, I mean, we're asking why were people interested in the bodies, but, you know, we were interested in those too, uh, our poor mothers and fathers. But um, I just, that's such a high impact thing when uh, Joseph comes in is able to take the body down and you know even the PHI you know it's it's, it's not it's that's it's not maybe at the same time but it is Mary holding Jesus having been taken down and I don't know I, I've had a lot of people dying recently in my family or in various you know people people waiting to die and things like that so I think it's um, it's pretty high impact the the um, how they felt about when Saul was had died and the fact that those men got on their horses or whatever they were riding yeah. Yeah. Or whatever and ride through the night to to go and, and rescue that body just like Joseph of Arimathea or something I mean it's it's just um, or, Mary, or the women coming to the tomb. I, I don't know. I it, it just it's resonating with me because I think it's yeah. season. Easter. Yeah. They certainly were all taking risks to do it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And physical stamp. I mean, I mean, they were putting aside other concerns around their safety or around um, yeah. um time, you know, times I mean people didn't usually, I'm sure, go out and drive right across the thing in the dark. Um, right. because there weren't any street lights, you know. <laughs> we As, <were> thinking... <laughs> especially because the Israelites had been totally routed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was really unsafe. You know, Saul must have inspired a lot of loyalty and and probably some love, you know, and that's the sadness of it because I always feel, you know, David really, he didn't hate Saul. No. no. It he was saves a, a, I mean, he doesn't, he say, purposely doesn't kill him several yeah, times and, and he has the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, there's like, there's like a tension of love between them that it's like, if the, oh, I wish this had never happened, mm -hmm. you know, at first Samuel, do you yeah. know what I mean? It's so sad, really. Well, but you know, really partly he, um, you know, they've both been anointed to be the king. Exactly. Yeah. It's, this is this is really um, in a certain sense they could both claim that God had chosen them to be the, the, the king and so I think there was this in conflict that happens in royal families or has happened over the years in royal families you know why was David anointed when Saul was still alive well Saul wasn't the king yet I think I think when Samuel anointed David the first mm -hmm. time you know he was the Shepherd yeah. boy. He was the shepherd boy and 
Was well, I, I didn't God say, you know, I'm really sorry that I made Saul king. Yeah. 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 He said that to Samuel. I mean, if right. Samuel is a good witness. And that was... Um, is it, the timing is not really real clear, the chronology. Because yeah, that's what I'm trying we've, got, to we've gone on and had way many stories. I mean, nobody could have lived as long as these stories are, I don't think. But um, yeah. but I, I think it's, it, 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 it's, it's sort of like if you put your fingers like this, you know, it, the times there are stories that are, you know, interlaced that are not mm -hmm. necessarily consecutive in terms of chronology. But, yeah. but, but, but in any case, the, the, when the story of, of the anointing of David to be the king, the future king, you know, nothing was done about it right at first. I mean, right. Yeah. right. He, yeah. knew, he knew he had been anointed. His brothers watched him be anointed, the whole thing. And Saul had been chosen from the beginning to be the first king, you know, in that right. I mean, well, I think David had a good deal of respect. I mean, he just considered that to. You know, you know, to to legitimize his own anointing, he had to be observant of Saul's anointing. Exactly. Mm. And he mm. says that over and over Good again. Point. Yeah. You know, I won't, you know, I can't, I won't kill. I won't touch the anointing. The that, that exactly. That, yeah. is, that seems like the most important part of his relation to him. Yeah. And I think I mean, Jonathan is another big part. I mean, because, I mean, in a certain sense, some of the goodwill that he, Get, that Saul gets is is also as the father of Jonathan. I mean, I, I mean that's a whole different strain of mm -hmm. much, much to him. Yeah, yeah. But it was interesting that, that I mean that 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 one section. I mean with with David, basically uh, selling himself and his men as pretty much as mercenaries to save himself. To the other to the king. Philistines. Yeah. Yes. And then being willing yeah. to fight for the Philistines yeah. against their own people. He was quite willing to do that, except the Philistines said, no, we don't think so. Um, <laughs> we don't trust you that much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I mean, and that kind of kept David from actually having to do something that probably yeah. would have made it very difficult for him to become the king of Israel. Um, yeah. But, if it had actually yeah been part of the yeah being party but um and he, he went out and i mean when he was serving the the other king he was going out and wiping out all the enemies every man woman and child yeah, yeah. Um, it's not a particularly flattering view that it's particular not. story yeah well and, and, yeah I, I mean we we know we, oh sorry Oh, no, I was just saying, he also rescued the women later. Yeah. Well, he rescued their, his own He rescued women. his own people. And the people yeah. from his, the, I mean, the, I think his his soldiers' wives. Right. right. Yeah, but I mean, he he was, every, everybody that was the enemy of the king he was serving at the time, yeah. Yeah. he wiped it, out. Yeah. And he did it, he, he, out of, I mean, that was a choice he made that he didn't want them saying anything about him so he just wiped them all out took the yeah um, took the I livestock think you're right sandy yeah he he didn't want any witnesses exactly i think it actually says that yeah so it's 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 not like i said it's not a very flattering picture of david at yeah. that particular point in his life um which again makes him more interesting it does that david who became the hero of of the new of the old testament and is still the hero of the jewish nation was was a complicated person he yeah. was he gets even more interesting started, yeah. 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 It's, yeah yeah it's only going to get worse yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. He, he certainly is not the rosy cheeked youth he as he was first with. described when Samuel, yeah, yeah when he was the young singer out, yeah. and yeah. ruddy, ruddy cheeks and uh, beautiful eyes. There, I mean, that's just the, 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 it's almost like a an eon of time that goes. I mean, it, the way this is written, I mean, mm -hmm. the way it became put together for the Bible, it, yeah, uh, or the Hebrew scripture was. I mean, it's that seems like eons before when he was the little shepherd boy, the youngest 
son and he, you know, I mean, he's such a naive kind of like an innocent, mm -hmm. innocent party to this. He didn't protest being anointed. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, no. yeah, it certainly doesn't say that. But um, and then it, he becomes this kind of hardened mercenary. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, th I think it's almost like the, you know, Hiawatha, or one of those long narrative poems that goes through generations in one poem, you know, I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's almost they're bigger than life. You know, they, they have to fit so many of the stories into this one person that they. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I think it's, uh, reading it all together makes Saul much more sympathetic character. Yeah, I agree. Than, than when you read little parts of these things. And because after all, we could be reading about David and um, Bathsheba or something, you know, and we, you know, I mean, they're, they're, three lifetimes in what the Bible has written about these people. It seems almost yeah. that one person couldn't have had this whole life. All of these events. Well, yeah. David, yeah. David comes across as, as very tough. Uh -huh. And, Strong. and it, I mean, if you had to pick a word for him, maybe that's not it, but maybe I would ask what, whereas Saul, if you had to pick a single word for him, the word hapless comes to mind. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That he, you know, he doesn't, he does things and he regrets it. No, you're right. I really shouldn't be going after you to kill you. I'm going to change my mind. You know, there's something. It's undependable in his. Uh, undependable. I mean, even going to the Witch of Endor after he drives out all the other mediums, you know, he's, he, there's a kind of, he's in, didn't we say this once before? He, sometimes we feel that Saul's in over his head. Well, he is. And, yeah. and, and going to the Witch of Ender, he kind of yeah. betrays himself his own principles, in right. his weakness. But yeah. really all, I think all he is is contradictory mm -hmm. himself. And, and I, you know, I think probably to, to try to lead a country or lead a country, you have to be, you have to be a, lot, a lot of different, have, have a lot of different faces. Mm -hmm. And I think between Saul and David, they make uh, kind of one presentation of a, the complications of being a king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. You, you'd vote for David if there yeah. were an election. You might wish for Saul. But you might wish for Saul. Yeah. Someone who, was, who wasn't so sure all the time that they were. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, he, David is such a strong personality. Yeah, but if if you were living in a world where people were waiting to attack and murder and wipe you out, you, I mean, you would you would want a hard you would want a, a hardened warrior as your king. No, yes. No you know, I always thought the ages. I remember when I was young and there, everybody was living to be over a hundred, and I remember thinking. Well, life was so hard then. It probably seemed like it was a. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed like nine hundred. Am I ever gonna die? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just too yeah, hard. Is. David is the, is this relationship with Jonathan? You know, there's this tenderness and so this this his 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 strongest. Well, I think he was committed to the kingship of the king i mean i mean to i think he was committed to yahweh and to the one chosen by him you know i mean i think he he honored saul but he also you see the 10 i mean the, there are all these personalities that david has and the relationship with jonathan and the f fidelity that he is able to keep with that is uh, yes is similar to the fidelity he has toward the gods of the lord's anointed as, as he you know um I think it's pretty powerful. I don't know that we've had, I mean, in my lifetime, I don't know, I, this is probably too broad, but it seems like we don't have people who are that committed to certain um, values like that, that are uncompromising in, um, in our political system. I don't know, that might be too broad, but that's the way I'm feeling now. <laughs> Um, you, you, do you mean like Jonathan's sen sense of loyalty no, and love no, for David? No, I was thinking of of, of, of the, the the thing about what kind of leader we want to have, so, somebody who's powerful enough to make hard decisions and things. And, yeah, and that who um, has a moral compass. I don't know. Maybe you wouldn't say Saul did, but but I, I would say David had that. 
I don't know. I, I, I can't, I guess just getting into the contemporary thing is just not even applicable, but I'm concerned about it. So I, yeah, yeah, for good. Yeah. Well, one thing about David, he was always very definite. Always and very definite. He definite. said, with this guy Nabal, he says, okay, I'm going to ruin this guy <laughs> until Abigail comes and literally begs him. She has a long speech of kind of begging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's powerful too. Yeah. Although he's like, he's like an outlaw with a bunch of yeah, ruffians, yeah. it seems, as his followers, a lot of them too. Yeah, it seemed like they were kind of blackmailing him for a free party. Well, you were speculating last time, is this when people name their baby girl Abigail? Yeah. Naming her for this woman. Yeah, I wonder if all the Abbeys, I think is what I said, I if all her. the Abbeys are really named after this Abigail. Who well, it's not a bad choice. Wife. It's not yeah. a bad choice. Oh, yeah. she's 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 very she's admirable. She's smart. It's a popular. It was a popular Southern name. My daughter, my grandmother's name was Harriet Abigail, and uh -huh. and, and my daughter is named after her Harriet Abigail. So it's yeah, uh, yeah it's I, I wasn't thinking biblically actually. I was yeah, thinking. yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know it's interesting because the, the the maids in the wealth in the rich or the aristocracy in England the the maids who looked after young women who were not yet uh -huh. out right. in the world. Right. Like Abigails. They're Abigails. Oh, Abigails, right. Oh, oh I, I had no idea. That's right. Yes, I'd forgotten that. I had no idea. I wonder where that comes from. It may well come from this. Yeah, well I think so. You have some wise woman. Who's... Wise, resourceful woman who knows yeah. what to do when, who, who was guy, who had, when was she's guiding. on the brink. Yeah. Well, we should pay it. Well, I we. I mean, I should pay attention to the women in David's life, because there are other women in oh, his yes. life that are right. coming up. Yeah, yeah. And um, Michal, and there's three so far: Michal and and Abigail, and this woman Ahinoam. I'm I'm not sure. There's much about her later on, but we shall see. Anyway. And why does Michal get married to someone else? You know, I, Saul I made her. I can't yeah. remember why that happened. Who did well, she that he, somebody gave her to this other husband? Uh, but I, I couldn't tell when we were reading if um, I first of all thought that Saul had given her while that David was out on patrol or you mm -hmm. know uh, that so he had. He, David married Michal. Yeah, because I know. Michal helped him escape. Right. Saul, remember there was that ruse of yes. the sort of dummy in the bed right. when they came right. to kill David. Right. And then I think Saul was just so, I don't know, he says, well, she's been abandoned by her husband, quote, yeah. unquote. That was the excuse. So he gave her to someone else. Yeah, when David was out doing other stuff, I mean, with his 600 men or 2,000. Yeah, he kind of annulled the marriage. Well, the yeah. women are kind of political pawns, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's very useful for him to take Abigail, the widow, as a kind of symbol of having triumph. Yeah. Well, but he you recognized know, her worth, but he also got, I suspect, because they don't mention that Abigail or her previous husband had children, and he yeah. also got himself a very tidy little inheritance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Nabal had a lot of... He had a thousand goats. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of goats. Yeah, it's a lot of goats. And um, and you know, Michal, it said she loved David. Yeah. She re she had a thing for David. And um so it was a and she helped him. It was a good marriage, I guess. I mean, didn't last very long, I guess. Yeah, talk about problems with in-laws. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you don't know what to do. Yeah. Really, the, the way it's written, it, it it acts as if she had no agency in deciding to be given to this other man. So, mm -hmm. I, yeah, it I, sounds I, like I, it. 
because she, I think she thought she had been chosen to be David's wife, which she yeah. was. But then, yeah. then it was all just kind of like taken away on a whim or on a, yeah, you know, the pawn. It was like the chess game or something where they she's needed over here and David is all the way across the board and he hasn't, you know, he hasn't made his way home very often or yeah lately yeah. I mean, it was just, it was just the way women were treated is the way when I was reading yeah. before, before tonight, I was thinking. Well, know. I read ahead and um, this other man that Michal was given to appears again. Oh, okay. And I think in Second Samuel. So, because David hasn't forgotten about Michal as when I, when I read ahead. Abigail's he remembers cute. her. He's pretty cute, Abigail. Yeah. So, well, it's well going to well, thank you, everybody. I got to get back to my taxes, which are low. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what's this, what's this I guess this? you better. October. Yeah. What's you this? got what's till this? October. I know, exactly. It's been that kind of week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you take care, Peggy. Yeah, nice thanks to so see much. you. Thanks for being nice. here, Peggy. Nice hey. Bye. Nice to see you guys. Thank you, Larry. Um, yeah, bye, I Becky. Gave, bye, uh, Timothy. Okay. <laughs> and I, I gave you guys the chunk for next Wednesday, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. And I think it's working out to, you know, make extend it in bigger pieces. Good. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, hey, Becky, can can we hear you now? No. no. Huh. Isn't that funny? Well, next time, definitely. Okay. Bye, everybody. I'm going to go. Okay. Bye, Larry. Thank you. Sure. Bye-bye.